DNA Star now offers a combined workflow for assembling data from multiple NGS projects together. In this video, I'm going to combine an RNA-seq project with a ChIP-seq project. To get started, you need to have already assembled the projects you want to combine. And it's important that the assemblies you want to combine all used the same reference genome. In this case, I've used one of the human genome template packages that I downloaded from the DNA Star website. To combine assemblies, start in Seekman Engine. From the Workflow section, select Combine and Analyze Assemblies from one or more workflow. The next step is to add the assembly projects you want to combine. So here you can see I've added two assemblies of RNA-seq data, each representing the sample at different time points and I have my ChIP-seq assembly of the same sample, as well as a ChIP-seq control. And notice that SeqMan Engine automatically identified the control for our ChIP-seq assembly. Next, we can review the signal processing parameters. Note that the relevant analysis methods are already selected for me. And since we're using human data, I'm going to import the variant annotation database as well. Finally, we need to name our project and specify an output folder. Then click on Start Combining to combine the projects. Once the projects have successfully been combined, we are ready to explore and analyze the data in ArrayStar. So first I'm going to open the Fragment table by going to Data, Show Fragment Table, and then I'll click on Add Manage Columns so that I can add a column showing the Log2 IP signal values as well as a column that will show genes that intersect the peaks. And you can see the two new columns have been added here. Now I need to filter this data, so I'll go to Filter, Filter All, and we will look for IP fragments in our ChIP-seq experiment with the log signal greater than 2. And I'll click Search and you can see that ArrayStar found 589 fragments that met that criteria. I'm going to click this button, which will select the results and show them to me in the fragment table. And from here, I'm going to right click and choose show the genes near these IP fragments so that I can create a subset of genes near the peaks. And as you can see, that took me to the gene table with 771 genes selected. So now what I want to do is further filter down these genes to find genes that show an upregulation in gene expression as well. So I'll go to Filter, Filter Selected, and here we want to search for genes with an expression level of at least log 1 in each of my RNA-seq experiments. And we want to find genes that show a fold change of at least four between the two time points. I'll click search and that narrowed it down to 12 genes. I want to look at these in the gene table, so I'll click the button for Select and Show Results in Gene Table. I only want to see the genes I have selected, so I'm going to click on this button here and choose Show Only Selected Genes. And then I'll click on the button for Add Fold Change, so I can see those values as well and then I'm going to sort by fold change. And here at the top I see an interesting gene with a significant increase in expression and an IP signal that's high in the ChIP-seq experiment and low in the control. To visualize this data, I'll select the gene, right-click on it, and choose Send Selection to GenVision Pro. And that will open up GenVision Pro, our genome visualization software, and it will automatically open to the gene I had selected in ArrayStar. 
Here in the analysis section, I can see the RPKM values for one of the RNA-seq time points, but the y-axis scale needs to be adjusted to see the data on the other tracks. I can do that by selecting the data tracks, and then changing the y-axis range from the options panel. And now I can see the upregulation in gene expression for this time point, as well as the high IP signal values for the ChIP-seq experiment for this gene. From here, I can change the appearance of my image by changing the graph type, color, height, and other aspects of the image to prepare it for publication. To learn more about our software and to see more videos like this one, please visit our website.